There's a multitude of ways to be able to see a wall's properties after it's been placed. In this example, let's select on this wall that's drawn here in the middle of our screen. After selecting it, we can look at its properties underneath Properties. The first spot is going to be the Type Selector list. This is going to show what type of wall this is. Below that, we'll be able to see how the wall was drawn as far as its location line. Further down, we'll be able to tell that this wall was drawn on level 1. We can see it has an unconnected height of 20 foot. So this wall was drawn on our first floor, and it has a height of 20 feet tall. As we move down, we'll see such information as room bounding. The room bounding checkbox allows us to allow rooms to find this wall. In Revit, rooms are actual objects, and when you place a room, they'll automatically expand out until they find any object that has room bounding enabled. And that's what this checkbox here allows it to do. It allows room objects to see walls inside of Revit. As we scroll down even farther, we can see dimensions associated with this particular wall. In this case, we can see it's 63 feet 6 inches, as well as the area and volume of the wall. And we can see what phase this was created in. Phasing is periods of time in Revit. So we can tell that this was created in the new construction phase, and it's never been demolished. All these properties inside of this particular dialog box are called instance properties, or instance parameters. Another kind of property that's available to us are type parameters. These can be found underneath the Edit Type button. And if you select on Edit Type, it'll bring up the Type Properties dialog box. And from here, we'll see more properties associated with the walls, including this thing called Coarse Scale Fill Pattern. What Coarse Scale Fill Pattern does in relationship to walls is if you select inside of this box, click on this little dot, you can then tell this wall that at a coarse level of detail, it should be filled up with a certain pattern. In this example, I'll just select a solid fill and click on OK. For the Coarse Scale Fill Color, what this does is it allows us to change the color from being black to be a different color. Now usually if I'm going to enable this particular function, this is usually for nice pretty presentation plans. So the walls are going to be filled in dark. But in this case, just so that we can see the color, I'm going to choose a green color off of the list and pull this bar up. Now click on OK once you get your color. We can see that it now has the right color associated with it. And we'll take a look at that over here in just a moment. If you select on the Edit button, this is where each layer of material is that makes up these different walls. And we can see the thicknesses, as well as what each material is that makes the wall up. If you want to see this a little bit better, we can pull this over by just clicking on this top bar, pulling it over, and selecting on the Preview button. And it'll show us a preview of what it'll look like in Plan View. As well as, if we come down here in View and click on Section, click inside of this area, and you'll be able to spin the wheel to be able to zoom in and zoom out to see all the different layers of materials that make up this wall. Now, let's get out of this by clicking on OK. You notice it's a solid fill in green, but this is only going to show up at a coarse level of detail. Click on OK to this. Click here in the drawing area, and if you zoom in, you'll be able to see that this wall is now this green color. But this could be anything. This could be any sort of pattern. So it could be lines or dashes or dots. And this will only show up at a coarse level of detail. So if you come down to this box, click on it and change this to fine, you'll notice that that particular color goes away in this instance. Your properties allow you to be able to manipulate, one, the way that the wall looks, two, the materials that are going to be associated with the wall. Also, three, it's going to allow us to be able to change things as the height of the wall, what level that the wall is going to be hosted along with, how the wall is drawn, and a variety of other kinds of properties. And if you want to be able to make changes to a wall, just remember, select on the wall first, and then adjust its properties over here underneath properties.